John Darvel, BBC Radio Bristol. Good morning. We are live from Western College this morning, Friday the 4th of November. And the reason we're here is very simple. We are going to explore in the next few hours what next for Western Supermare. Uh, we went out earlier this week to talk to people in the street to explore the future for the town. We do feel very much part of Western and um, like to think of us as being an important part um, with other independent retailers here and would very much like to see Western clean up a bit. I think, I think it's probably looking very grubby these days and could do with a lot of sort of TLC appreciate. That means a lot of money and there's more people need to be working out on the, on the streets and doing stuff to um, make the place look uh, a bit more appealing. Uh, both to local people and to visitors alike. Too many houses, they're building too much on the green belt. I mean, I've been here 40 odd years and I've seen a hell of a lot of changes in that 40 years. And I mean, that's the classic example now we're losing the police station. That's going to be turned into flats or luxury flats, so they say. But yeah, no, too, mu too much building going on in the town. Okay. The trouble is, is we're a commute town now for Bristol. That's the problem. Everybody, most of the people that live in and, around, in and around Western are now working up in Bristol or in the surrounding area. I think they need a bowling place where we, where we can go bowling. Oh, like Tempin Bowling? Tempin Bowling, yeah. We've got a little mini one, but that's all we got. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that's a little arcade. That's not more of a sport, is it? <laughs> you know, so I prefer that to be here. I don't know if they're going to make one in that new suplex over there, but we just have to wait, won't we? And see, we've pretty much got everything else, really. Well, everyone seems to go to Bristol these days now just to do their most shopping, their Christmas shopping, and if they got it here, they go here, don't they? New shops, because the shops keep coming into the Sovereign Centre, and because of the lease and the rents, they don't stay for long. We had a Curry's and a Dixon's and a Mother Care, and they've all gone to the outskirts of Western. And the problem with that is if you don't drive, it's not easy. You've got to go on a bus and you might not want to. So there are the views of some people we spoke to earlier this week in Western Supermare. This morning, we are exploring what next for Western Supermare. It has changed significantly in the last 25, 30 years. So much money is being spent in Western Supermare at the moment, not least of which in Dolphin Square. There's a new cinema going up. Go back a few years, there was the massive sea defences. And, of course, the Tropicana, which was turned into a worldwide exhibition last year, put Western Supermare not only on the map locally, but globally as well. But what's missing? What's next for Western Supermare? One of the principal drivers of the economy, one of the principal drivers of the town, is Western College, which uh, was founded a long time ago, 1845, uh, which makes it considerably older uh, than the University of Bath, which is just a mere 50 years old. The principal of Western College is Dr Paul Phillips, OBE. He joins me on the line now. Uh, Paul, good morning. Good morning. You're older than Bath University, isn't it? About time you became one. Um, well, we've already got university centre status. We're working with um, the University of West of England, Bath Spa University. We'll be a university town in the very near future, I'm sure. By when? Um, I suppose we've got approval for the university centre and the name. We're converting the winter gardens as we speak. Um, I believe the new university centre will open next year. So you, you will be next year called? Um, university Centre Western. So this is a significant change from the college, which I said founded in 1845. Let's just touch on the Winter Gardens, because that was a very controversial purchase by the college from North Somerset Council last year for a pound. Uh, what happens to those Winter Gardens? Is it all going to be full of students? No, I mean, what we did when we took... We wanted to obviously advance the concept of University Centre. At the same time, North Somerset Council wanted to use education as a catalyst for the town, but also wanted to preserve facilities for the community. So we've established a working group, and we will have university centre, but we'll still have those facilities for the community. Will there be a ballroom? There will be a ballroom. In so fact, you, you, it will you be... could get Strictly Come Dancing to come down here. You, well, Maybe in John fact... Penrose, our guest, could be the new Ed Balls next year. Well, you never know. <laughs> 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 um, what, what next for, for, obviously, for your place in Western? Because, you know, you've got 30,000 students enrolled. I'm told there's some 15,000 who actually come to the campus here. One yeah. of the concerns often happens, uh, Paul, is that universities, colleges, universities, take over towns. 
It's I, happened in Bristol. It's happened in Bath. Could it happen here? I don't know that they... I mean, I know what you mean. I think they become a major feature of a town, and I think they can be seen as the catalyst for regeneration. We've been very careful with our university centre approaches that we're only going to offer degrees that almost guarantee employment and particularly are looking at those employment opportunities in the southwest and nationally. So if we look at what we're doing even at the moment before that centre opens, um, there is some very dynamic success in terms of progression to employment, students landing top jobs with Dyson, etc. So we are creating that sort of level of expertise for the future. And that's going to that's be a law centre, but I know you're yeah. also focusing on engineering, of course, just down the M5. One of the biggest construction projects uh, in the world will be happening, which will be Hinkley Point. And yes. you're working closely with that, Mike. Yes, we are. Well. I mean, um, just over a month ago, we opened the new high tech centre on Locking Road, which will be part of the complex. That's open now. That's got the state of the art facilities for all the high technologies that Hinkley needs and indeed has been designed with Hinkley in mind. Now, my, my last couple of questions to you. Um, if you go shopping, do you go to Cribs? Or do you come into Western? Um, I do, well, I do tend to go into Western more by nature of my job, but um, I, go, I would say I would go to both. You go to both. What would make you stay in Western? What would make me stay in Western would be seeing that shopping complex developed, seeing a university centre at the heart of the community, and seeing the infrastructure that's needed for the future and, I think, realising that there will be major employment and development in the area. Ah, right. So we're now getting to something that's actually quite fundamental, but it's my last question to you. It is employment, because Western used to have industry. It doesn't really have much industry now, a lot of service. It needs manufacturing of some shape or description, doesn't it? It does. I mean, I think if you looked at where we're seeing the greatest growth and demand at the moment is engineering. We only started developing engineering courses just over two years ago. We've already got some of the major contracts with GKN, IPCO, etc. And my view is that as we develop these facilities, the big companies will come into Western and start establishing themselves. Dr. Paul Phillips, OBE, Principal of Western College. Thank you very much for joining us Thank on you. the phone today. I'm very grateful to you. So, 0345 900 9 this morning. For our first hour, we are exploring what next for Western Supermare. After the Supremes, we're going to hear from the local MP, John Penrose, and from the former chairman of the Federation of Small Businesses in Western Supermare, John Mayer. But I want to hear from you. This morning, John Darvel, uh, we're live from Western College this morning. Uh, we're exploring what next for Western Supermare. 0345 900 5949. If you live in Western, if you come to Western, if in fact you haven't been to Western Supermare for a long time because you think it's, well, a bit of a sad seaside town and there isn't much going on and why isn't there a pool at the Tropicana? John Penrose is raising a fist at me right now. <laughs> uh, I want to hear from you as well. 0345 900 5949. With us is John Penrose. Rose, the local Conservative MP. John, good morning. Good morning. Yeah. And John Mayer, who until Tuesday of this week was the chairman of the Federation of Small Business and Western Supermare. Yes. You're yeah. now the vice chairman. I'm vice chairman, yeah. Uh, was there some sort of massive political no. uh, uh, undercurrent there? No, just uh, ongoing. Ongoing. Yeah, on, been on, there for a long time. Ongoing Tried changes. Change. <laughs> uh, we, we all know that politics is a fast-moving business, don't yes, we, John Penrose? Yeah. Can't think what you mean. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, let's just explore something. Um, if you look at... I didn't ask uh, uh, Paul Phillips this. You look at the front page of the Western College um, website. It's got European funding. Mm. Western Supermare, John Penrose, has benefited significantly from European funding, from the sea defences to you know, investment in the town centre. Um... <laughs> Obviously, things have changed a little bit, haven't they? They have indeed. And one of the things which you know, we need to make sure continues to happen is that if we aren't paying money into the European budget and then getting it back from Brussels instead, that the short circuit of it not going to Europe and then back again but staying in, in Britain means that we continue to get the investment which we've had publicly to bring in the private sector investment. And one of the things that's been most important is not just that we've had public money coming in, but that that's served to catalyse an awful lot of other people, local businesses mm. and other people, investing in Western as well. And an awful lot of the things that you see in Western now, you know, the, the Grand Pier being a classic example, have been private money, not public. So the two need to go hand in hand. We need to make sure we don't lose either. But, the, but the, here, is, here is the reality from the point of view of Western Super Mayor. That £350 million 
let's not go down that route again as to what that number please, was. Or please what. spare us. Yeah. <laughs> spare exactly. us all. Spare us all. Yeah, there isn't much of that jam in the pot, is it? And it's going to make it harder for Western Supermare, harder for seaside towns to, to put their hand up and go, yes, please. Well, there's, there's, a, there's a Coastal Communities Fund, which is... Yes been going for some while now and, and that's going to continue uh, I'm told so that that will that's that's essential and it's really important that that continues and I think you know, it's always been difficult I mean I I remember soon after I got elected going into back with the then Labour government to say look make sure that you don't drop the sea defences mm. when the 2008 banking crash came and everything was off the table yeah um, yeah I was one of a long queue of MPs saying look for goodness sake don't scrap my project yes um, and yeah and the local council and everybody yes. else weighed in in Western and ours wasn't scrapped yes so it's always been difficult I don't think it's going to get any easier okay. or any more difficult in future you know? okay we got Andy uh, on, on the line from uh, Portishead Andy good morning Andy in Portishead good morning Andy no, we don't have Andy at the moment. Uh, John Mayer, let me come back to, uh, to you. Um, Federation of Small Business, obviously, Western Super Mayor, as I say, has this image of it being a seaside town. That image is not true, is it? No, it's not. It's, it, it has this dichotomy, doesn't it, really? Is it a tourism resort or is it a commuter town for Bristol? It's not. It, it has a very you know, integrated business system that needs funding, needs building, and that's going to be one of the biggest challenges in the future for Western Supermare. I mean, what, we'd, well, what needs to be seen, really, is investment through, through into transport so we can, you know, business, businesses hate uncertainty. That's one thing businesses really hate. And what they really want to know is... Got a fair bit of that at the moment. We've got a bit of fair well, with Brexit and with, you know, and also the decision for North Somerset not to, you know, be involved in Metro Mayor. There's a degree of uncertainty and businesses don't like it. So what we, what, what we want to see is investments into funds into, into the infrastructure into West Super Mayor. We want to see um, devolution to multi-transport budgets. We want to see um, a, a response. Well, you're not going to get devolution, are you? Because your mm. council has turned around and said, mm. no, thank you very much, we don't want any of that. So you well, won't that... get an integrated transport authority because you won't be part of the party. And there is a degree of uncertainty there, isn't it, which business don't like and, and what, okay. what, what needs to be addressed, really. We have got uh, Andy. Uh, Andy and Porter said, good morning. Morning. Uh, John, how are you doing? All right. I'm very well, thank you very much indeed. I'm told you, you used to live in Western Supermare. Why did you move to Porter's Head then? Well, I didn't. I moved, first of all, to Nilesin, then I moved to Portishead. I've only been here a short while. But, right. But, but um, I mean, we've got all the rhetoric sitting there by the sounds of it. I mean, they, they, they start off with... Uh, the, the bottom line for Western is the same as all coastal towns. I lived in Sussex for many years. They can't get any money off the government. And what my, my purpose of bringing up was, I mean, what a nightmare of a place to get into. You've got two roads going in and out of Western Supermare. We've got one road, which is the M5, and that's it. If the M5 is blocked, that's it. Everything's on shutdown. I mean, the only other way into Bristol is the 370, and, I mean, that's an absolute nightmare. And, and yet all these plans and all these people with due reverence to all the politicians sitting there going on about this and going on about that, the bottom line is, like all seaside towns, they can't get any, any money off anybody to improve the road systems. And I saw this week in Western, out around Sainsbury's and Home Base, that area in the Wirral, all the new homes going in. It's already a nightmare on the road. And the roads aren't going to get any freer. We aren't going to get any new roads because nobody could afford them. What are they going to do with all this? Well, let's put that to John Penrose. Uh, Andy, stay with us. John Penrose, uh, he, he makes an interesting point that if you look at Western Supermare, I don't know, back in the early 1980s, you couldn't see it from the M5. Now it's pushing at the M5, yeah. and I'm sure Derek Mead on the other side of the M5 is waiting for his moment in the structure plan to build on Puxton Vark. I'm sure you're not, Derek, if you're listening. But, um, <laughs> but we, are, we are a massive, it's a massive town now, yeah, just shy of 100,000 people. They've all got to move, and there's only one, ray, one principal road in and one principal road out. Yeah, Andy's absolutely right. We, we've had periodic... Um, you know, problems with Junction 21 and actually what's happened it's what three or four years ago now there's a big improvement program and for oh two or three years now it's been a lot better but it's starting to clog up again because yes. the town keeps growing and so we've got to keep on we've got to keep on improving as it goes does it need another junction it, does it need an because there's a yeah. talk of the new junction there is 21a up, up, yeah, 21a yeah, yeah. is that going to benefit western oh it, it would be a huge benefit the what the 
the traffic engineers who sort of do do this stuff say is that there's a little bit more you can do on Junction 21 as it is, and we can and that's scheduled now. That's going to happen in the next little while, so that will get better again. Um, but but should we have done that the last time? Because oh, oh, I mean, that was only finished a couple well, of years ago. W- when I first got elected, which is 10 years ago now, I, I, I said, look, I want to see Junction 21 a heck of a lot better. And we've, done, yeah. we've had two tranches already. There's a third one coming. Right. But it's kind of a never-ending thing because yes. yeah, the town keeps growing. So once we've done this next lot of stuff on Junction 21, that's kind of it. It's, it's going to be at full capacity at that point. At that point, there's no other choice but 21A. And that's, that's a long way off, but we've got to start campaigning for it now because it's going to be expensive. But with the town growing... There, there will be no other choice. Now, John Mike. Yeah. If you go into countries in, in Europe, they build roads and they build infrastructure into it. We just seem to build infrastructure and try and fit the roads around it. And there's an opportunity here with Junction 21A to actually build a road and build infrastructure in it for industry, for housing. That's all things we need in Western Supermare. So that's a fundamental... It, it would solve the North Somerset conundrum of we need more houses but we don't know where to put them. Wouldn't it, John Penrose? No, it would, and in fact, I, I've been arguing for some time that rather than building on green fields on the edge of, of, of villages like Kongsbury and, and Bamwell and that sort of stuff, what we need to do is actually yeah, focus on building up, not out. Here in Central Western, we need the investment, we need the, the, the regeneration. That's, this is somewhere where we want the money to come, we want the, the people and the services and the, and, and the facilities which need to go with okay. that. Um, so actually, there's a, there's a kind of a sweet spot. Andy, are you still there? Yes, I am. What would bring you back to Western Supermare? What would make you move back to Western? Oh, nothing. I'm, I'm, I'm retired now, and I live in Portstead, and I love it here, and I've got a great view. But the bottom line is I've only seen one road in this country, and I travel around this country a great deal, and Europe and France, in fact. And um, but, but the thing is, there's one road that oh, I always think, what a good idea this was, and it's in Yeovil. And it's the main road that runs from Westlands. Yes, I was in the aircraft industry. Mm. And it runs from Westlands out to the 303. It's only two lanes, uh, both directions single lane, but it's just to take the traffic away from the Westlands area up to the 303. I mean, the 303 is a bottleneck. But the the thing is, I don't think there are any turn-offs on that road. Once you're on it, you can only go to the 303. Just a a straight bypass. Andy, we're going to leave it there. We need another road like that running from Western, along the coast, sadly, into Clevedon. Maybe. Andy, good to hear from you. Thank you for being part of the programme. 0345 905 949. What next for Western Supermare? John Penrose, the local MP, with us. Uh, and uh, we've also got John Mayer as well, who's chairman, former chairman of the Federation of Small Business in Western Supermare. Also, uh, a small business owner herself. Anna, good morning to you. Good morning. Welcome to the programme. You run a cafe? Yeah, just around the corner, a small independent cafe. OK, how long have you been going? Um, just over seven years. Uh, coffee? We do coffee in the daytime, so yep. there's lots of home cooking. And then in the evening, we're kind of an arts venue for music, um, cinema and art. How's that last seven years been? Because John mentioned the, the big crash of t- uh, 2008. That would pretty much tie you into it in, what, 2009? Yeah, we opened in 2009, which wasn't the most ideal time. Um, but you opened? But we opened because I felt that Western Superman needed something like that. Yeah. And... It's not always been easy, but we do have some good support from the local community because I think we're offering something a little bit different. Now, uh, one of the things that Western is... uh, A lot of people cry out for are big names, and there isn't a big-name anchor retailer here. People have been talking about Primark and H&M and Debenhams and and, and the likes of River Island, and, and of course... In my opinion, that's the problem, that we focus on big names, and by doing so, I think Western Superman may begin to lose its identity. So because you think a big name would be a bad thing? I think, of course, it would be a draw to the town, and I think it will help to pe- keep people in the town centre rather than jumping on the motorway going to Bristol um, because we definitely lack shopping and restaurants. But the focus... Because you're going to get those, aren't you? Dolphin Square next year, £45 million pounds worth of I think maybe we may be getting investment. some. I'm not sure if we're getting the right ones. Um, Nando's, I'm told. Yeah, and I think that if we fill our town centres with Costa Coffees and Nando's, and our dual carriageways with harvesters that will just become like any other town across the country. To be fair, you've already got your dual carriageways filled with yeah, harvesters. Yeah, this, this, this is my point, noticed, this is my point. I noticed a few of those coming in this morning. Uh, John Penrose, let me come back there, because Anna is a, a, a brilliant example of the entrepreneurship that we have in our part of the world. I mean, the West and, and indeed North Somerset, you were telling me this, John Mayer, uh, one, uh, it has the highest number of... Um, 
self-employed people, small businesses in the country. The West is, is the engine. You know, we are a net contributor uh, to uh, the exchequer like no other part of the country. Um, Anna's a very good example of that. But if you start asking for the big names, the Primarchs, the H&Ms and the Debenhams, you're going to change the town. Yes, you are. I mean, actually, what, what most of us do is we, we want to have both, don't we? I mean, we, we all want to be able to shop in some of these big names, but we also like the character and the variety and, and, and the sort of you know, the, the spice of the independence that, that, that bring the that make mm. light the place up. So actually, most of us want both. And the thing is that... Can you we, have both? Well, and the difficulty is that actually we're all changing the way we shop as well. So yeah. it's not just Western. It, it's town centres right the way around the country are all struggling at the moment because we're all buying an awful lot more online. So the retailers are saying, actually, we don't need so many physical outlets. The big chains are actually reducing the number of physical shops they've got because they're doing more online and with fewer places actually on the ground too. Maybe so you should tell a whole lot of stuff to going South on. Gloucestershire who approved the expansion of Cribs Scoresway yesterday, increasing that by 50%. Yeah, and, well, and the thing about Cribs is that it does something different from a town centre. It's a, it's a purpose-built place, and, and therefore you know, people like to do both. Again, we, we, we all of us, I suspect, in Western, shop occasionally at Cribs and shop occasionally yeah. in the centre of town, and, and that's, that's what being a free but country is all about, but, isn't it? But you, you know? need Anna. You need more oh, yeah. people to come into the town centre, don't you? you? Rather than leaving the M5, getting on the M5 and going somewhere else, you want them coming in here. If local council rec councils recognised that we needed independent businesses and made it easier for us to run independent businesses with things like business rates, then more independent businesses would pop up around the town and we'd keep our identity. This is my point, that it's all very well that we need the big names, but if we've only got big names, then what is, what is Western Supermare? And it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy in that everyone thinks Western's rubbish, so everyone jumps on the motorway and goes to Bristol. No one's spending any money in Western, and then it does become rubbish because small businesses how do, shut how down. Do you, you, it, we've got the local MP, we've got the, the, the former chairman of the Federation of Small Businesses, so, so they're taking lots of sounding. Oh, I hate that word. Uh, they're talking to people. Uh, you, you, here you are, Anna. You running a small business. You built it from nothing against the backdrop of uh, economic cat cat catastrophe. Can't even say the word. It was awful in yeah. 2009, and you're here seven years later. So what? What will make it less rubbish for you? Um, Western has to be looked at as a whole. What happens is we seem to have a new idea. So, for example, the new idea is the Dolphin Square, and everything is being focused on the Dolphin Square. So my end of town, this end of town, nothing's being looked at. So if, if Western is looked at holistically, then... And well, the, you're not going to benefit from Dolphin Square and I an think eight, an eight screen multi screen. I think cinema. I will benefit because hopefully people won't jump on the motorway and go to Bristol, but I won't benefit initially because people will go and spend their money in the chain restaurants mm. and you can't fight against a, a multinational it's 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 breeding consumerism and independent businesses isn't about that okay john may you wanted to come in there yes, well, i think it's a really fundamental thing here in terms of self-employment it's been proved that self-employment actually when people go to set up a self-employed they will actually start to employ people you know the we know the bigger institutions are beginning to downsize, so it's so important to have small businesses because small businesses will drive growth for, of keep unemployment down in West How many Superman. people do you employ, Anna? Um, I have about six or seven staff part-time. OK, so, so you, I mean, a lot of people rely upon you. Yeah, and a lot of my staff have been with me for four or five years, and we're a great team, and a lot of my customers have been using me since we opened. You know, I've watched my... Mm my customers' children grow up, and it, it really is a community feel, and people we need to remember that Western Supermare as a small town does have a community and it's, it's important. It's interesting you said small town there because I'm going to come back to you, John Mayer, before we, we take a pause. Uh, Western isn't a small town anymore, is it? It's you not. Know, people think Bath, city, you are, you are the same size, there or thereabouts, as the city of Bath. It is. It's been predicted by 2021 that the population of Western will be about 241,000. I mean, it, it could by that Well, that's time. more than doubling it, isn't it? Because yeah. you're just shy of 100 now, aren't you? Yeah. 96,000? 96,000. There or thereabouts? Yeah, so... It, it feels it, like a small town because most of those people are using Bristol as their city. Yes. So, so you've got, you know, we come back to what next for Western, make them turn into the town rather than getting on the M5 and maybe means that we won't have to redo Junction 21 again. I, I, I think we'll probably end up having to do both, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Anna's absolutely right. I mean, one of the big changes in the last few years has been that Western's turned into its own what they call a travel-to-work area. I, people dormitory. come into no, well, no, it was a dormitory of Bristol, yeah. but now actually it's drag, it's bring people in to work in Western from right. the surrounding villages. So it's turning into an economic hub 
on its, in its own right for the first time in a very long time. That's really, really good because it means we aren't just exporting everybody to, to Bristol in the morning and coming back. We're much more of a sustainable community, much more balanced than we were. Now, we've, we're not sustainable enough yet, but that's a step in the right direction. We need to see more of that, I think. OK, uh, where are we now? Coming up to 27 minutes. So this morning we are live at Western College. We are live in Western Supermare, 0345 905 949. What next for Western Supermare? Well, let's get the latest on the roads now as we hurtle towards 26 minutes to 10. Morning, Aaron. Good morning, John. Just looking slow on Bath Road if you're heading inbound. That's from the Hicksgate roundabout. It's also got some keys coming in off the M32. That's towards Newfoundland Circus and Temple Way. Also looking slow heading up towards the M32. Still looking slow heading in on Portway. We also have some roadworks on Seven Road in Avermouth. That's causing some hold-ups as well. If you're heading into Bath, there's an accident on Western Park. That's near Crown Hill. And also, if you're heading into Bath, London Road is looking very slow. Motorways, though, and the planes and trains looking good. But if you do spot anything else, 0345 905 949. Still to come with John Darvel. So this morning we're live in Western Supermare. We're live at Western College. Western College, as you heard earlier this hour, is set to become a university from next year. Uh, 30,000 students are enrolled in Western College. The campus itself supports some 15,000 students. Uh, Western has had a significant amount of coverage over the last year, not least of which uh, thanks to Banksy last year, turning the Tropicana into a worldwide art installation. I think one of the things we all need to get over is that the Tropicana is never going to have a pool again. Just, just you know, yes, have we got that? Good, excellent. What next, though, for Western Supermare? What does it need to make it a vibrant town worthy of its population and worthy of a future beyond it being a seaside town? 0345 905 949. Bristol, we're live at Western College, Western Supermare. We're exploring what next for Western Supermare. Uh, with us uh, is John Penrose, the Conservative MP for Western Supermare. Uh, also, John Mayer, former chairman of the Federation of Small Business for Western Supermare. And Andy Franklin has just joined us as well. He's set up his business five months ago. But I want to hear from you this morning 0345 905 949. What does Western Supermare need next? And if you have this perception of Western being a tired seaside resort uh, where lots of people from the Midlands come down in the summer, um, maybe you need to rethink that because that is not the Western Supermare of today. Let's come to you, Andy Franklin. You set your business up five months ago in what? Uh, in fire and safety. Fire and safety. Yeah. So that's what, business and, and homes or yeah, both? Mostly business, domestic properties is a very, very small part of it, but hotels, leisure facilities, all, all that sort of stuff. So what do you do? Uh, we provide uh, fire alarms, fire extinguishers, fire doors, uh, and the maintenance and surveying of um, okay. to, uh, to ensure they meet their requirements. And, and you live in Western? I live in Western, yeah. Sandy Bay? Sand Bay, yeah. Just at Sand Bay, just up the road there. Why Western? Why do when you set your business up, did you think, I'm going to do this in Western Supermare? Um, we found that there's a, there's a, a really good market for, for, the, uh, for the business locally. 95% of our business is based in Western, and um, we had a, a reasonably good connection um, with businesses locally previous to that. So um, it was uh, primarily set up to, to ensure we can meet the requirements for a lot of the businesses locally. Um, with the growth in Western, it's, um, with a lot of property development, um, for us it's been a great opportunity. Another 6,500 homes coming in the next 10 years, which somewhat supports John Penrose's argument of we need to get Junction 21 changed again. More cars, more homes. But, that, John Mayer, you're a, an accountant by day right. uh, and the chairman of, or the former chairman of the Federation of Small Business uh, by night, I suppose, and, and by day as well. Uh, but you must deal with a lot of people setting up their own businesses. I do a lot. People like Andy come to me virtually every single day. One of the fundamentals when anyone sets up in business, they need support. They need advice. Where do they get it? That is one of the real fundamentals in business. And funny enough, one of the go-tos for a lot of people in small business is actually accountants, but they should be wider than that, really. And really, there should be places like the Hive and Western Supermare, fantastic place that was set up. Um, that type of place is ideal. And, they, and it's a big jump to go to self-employment. 
Now, the old adage that one in three fail in the first year, three in five in, you know, in five years is very, very true. And why do they fail? Well, don't, don't put the man off. He's only been no. going five months. Well, yeah, but why do they fail? Because at the end of the day, they don't get enough support. So the support is so, so important. But over four planning. and a half million people now are classed as self-employed or uh, self-employed or running their own business. That's doubled in the last six years. It and, has. And Andy, you're mm. one of them. You're one of these people. Mm. What made you do it? What made you do Because th- there'll be a lot of people listening to you this morning at home or in a car the lights are red, I want to do this for myself. I'm not working for the man anymore, I want to work for me. And then the lights turn green and they don't. What made you do it? Um, I think you've got to make that jump at some point if it's something you want to do. Um, from our point of view, we realised there was an opportunity locally, we looked into it, we put together a business plan um, and we got support, which was key to the business really, um, getting support from other people and other You've got areas. a family? I've got a family, yes. It's a big risk for your family. Yeah, it's it's always a gamble, but I think if you if you plan properly and you do the right things, you know you can make success of it. Um, we've certainly grown very quickly in the last five months, taken on people. Um, and uh, how many people did you employ? We now we employ there's three people in the business now. And you started just with you? Uh, yeah, and uh, we've also got a silent partner as well. But yeah. Good discretion to me. George Osborne, former Chancellor and the current Chancellor, Philip Hammond, we rubbing his hands and clapping loudly, wouldn't he, Andy Franklin here, John Penrose? Andy, have you got any brothers? We, want, we need more people like you. <laughs> <laughs> and sisters too, you know. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Uh, what, what would make your life easier? What would make Western better for you to do business in? And you as a small business would make your life easier. What do you need? I, th- I think there needs to be, that certainly traffic becomes a problem for us. Um, we, do, we do spend a lot of time sat in traffic, um, going, going on and off the motorway, uh, uh, so on um, and also I think the support um, network although we, we've been quite lucky we've met um, certainly uh, with John we've been very lucky and um, you know we've got a lot of support in the area but I think that needs to be pushed um, much in a much greater way really okay uh, Andy great to hear from you thank you very much for being part of the program this morning good luck with your business five thank months you. in thank you very much indeed uh, Robin in Kewstoke Robin good morning hi it's Rob I beg your pardon sorry Rob I beg your pardon this is Rob in Kewstoke so I went Robin in Kewstoke I do apologise Rob but um, I <laughs> I don't have my usual infrastructure with me this morning, uh, live in Western Supermare. Um, what's your point? What would you like to say? The point is, um, John Mayer, hi John, um, uh, mentioned the devolution bid and yep. the fact that the West of England Infrastructure Fund that was bringing investment into Western Supermare has been turned down by North Somerset Council. That would have delivered something in the region of 200, 250 million pounds of investment into adult education, helping the college, into infrastructure including broadband into junction 21 improvements in the food enterprise zone that funding's been turned down and has gone john penrose supported the council's removal from that bid and actually supported the council pulling away from that funding and turning it down that worries me because as a business owner in the area living in Kewstoke, like andy we've just lost that growth we've just taken a big disadvantage a big step back from the position we are. We're now competing with, as you say, South Gloucestershire. They're going to get those funds. We compete with Bristol City Centre. They're going to get those funds. Western isn't. How does Mr Penrose in particular anticipate we're going to get those funds back and get that investment back into Western and we're not again seen as a poor cousins in the West of England? Well, I think John Penrose answer answer what Rob is talking about there because on the first week of May there will be a Metro Mayor elected for the West of England. And North Somerset won't be part of it. Yeah, and, and the reason why, I think, is, is, as Rob said, is it was a decision taken by the council. And they looked at the money, but it also came with some very, very serious strings attached. And one of the strings you just mentioned, John, is, is this um, Metro Mayor. And, you know, people in Weston and the villages around, we, we all remember the bad old days of Avon. Um, and nobody I Isn't talked that to... a bit of a red herring, saying it's going to be like oh. Avon? Well, I, 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 I don't think so. I mean, certainly if you talk to people in Weston, um, people are you know, still scarred by that. We were always at the back of the queue. Bristol ruled the roost. That was certainly the perception in Weston, and it, it knocked on into our schools, it knocked on into our health care, it knocked on into our infrastructure investment, um, and nobody wants to go back to that. And the fear is, and I think it's an entirely legitimate fear, that... Um, if you do go back to a, a metro mayor system, that's where we might end up. But and you're so, not even going to be part of it. So well, all, the, all the things you're talking about there, you're saying, well, we won't be part of it. All that money will go to South Gloucestershire, yeah. Baines and Bristol. North Somerset will be looking on with its face pressed against the window going, oh, that's nice. Yeah, but we're, we're, we're not being excluded from all sorts of other things too. So the, the, the local um, enterprise partnership, the LEP, is, is actually incredibly successful. That's got 
major money behind it. We're part of that. That's not going to change. And that's actually the thing which has got the track record. That's been going for several years now. It works really well. It helps us with you know, the, the local transport infrastructure across that entire area, but including the Bristol. But not going to do transport, Rob, is it? It's, I mean, you're, you're worried about transport. The LEP, well, it, 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 well, it's, you're not going to get an integrated transport authority and a LEP spending the same money. Well, you're not going to get an integrated transport authority, but we already have the local councils, have been for several years, cooperating voluntarily, doing what needs to be done. You don't need all this extra bureaucracy and infrastructure mm. to get them to do what they're already doing. Rob, are you convinced? Absolutely not. <laughs> um, Avon went 20 years ago. 20 years, years 1996. Ago. 1990, it existed from 74 to 96, so 27. It's been dead for as long as it existed. Get over it. Um, Mr. Penrose, sorry, get over Avon, stop shouting that. No one's interested in that. What we're interested in is the quarter of a billion pounds North Somerset's lost. That's massive. The other investment was going to come anyway. No point saying, oh, the LEP are going to give us investment. They were giving that to us anyway. We've just taken a big step back against Bristol City Centre, against Cribs. Cribs announced their big investment and their expansion yesterday. That's going ahead. That's going to have better transport than Western. Bristol's going to have better transport than Western. And we're sat here with a poor relation. Uh, what John, I'd like to know is John. how are we going to get over that? How are we going to address that? What is Mr Penrose doing? After he's had his Avon spout, what's he going to do now to help us, me, John, my what, family and our businesses? John, let's get John Penrose to answer that. John? I, I don't think that was an Avon spout. I think that just because it's been gone for 20 years doesn't mean to say that therefore it's OK to go back to something which was such a car crash. I mean, I, I just, it, it, we can't just say, well, you know, get, get over it and now it's OK to go back to it. It was a disaster. I can't see why anybody but would want to repeat it. you are not going to benefit at all from any of the investment that will go towards Metro Mayor. You're yeah. going to be looking on with at the, at the boundary of North Somerset going, well, that's all very nice. Yes, you may get let money, but let money goes to transport, for example, new railway stations and what have you. You won't get it. I, won't... I'm, I'm, I'm talking, for example, at the moment to, to transport ministers about improvements to... Uh, to Western Railway Station. Nobody is saying to me <laughs> at the moment... Uh, yeah. But, yeah, precisely, I'm laughing because it's such an awful station. Well, because, because those are necessary. Yeah. And nobody is saying to me, oh, well, you're not part of the Metro Mayor and therefore, you, therefore that's going to be a factor. You're, Rob, thank you very much for joining us this morning. John Mayer, you, you wanted to come on that. Thank yeah, you, Rob. Uh, picking up on what Rob's saying, really, one of the major things here that really comes across from small businesses and where we really need to get an answer is the uncertainty. We can, business cannot deal with uncertainty. We really do need to know what North Somerset Council are going to be doing, where the fund is going to come from, and that's what small business okay, needs. So we've, I totally got, agree we've got two bits of uncertainty. Obviously, we've got the uncertainty of what a metro mayor will be, and yeah. we'll have one elected. We haven't even got any candidates in the West of England at the moment. Uh, maybe John Penrose would have been a candidate if obviously North Somerset had been involved. It never been an ambition. Never about. been an ambition. <laughs> not to be a metro mayor. Uh, we've got that, obviously, and what happened on the 23rd of June of this year, which, uh, uh, again, uh, that took a tack that nobody was really expecting uh, yesterday. Uh, John Penrose, um, are we going to leave the European Union? Uh, uh, yes, we are. I mean, we voted to. Um, and so and even I, as someone who originally voted Remain, I'm a Democrat first and foremost, so I'm going to be voting to make sure that we, we do honour what the democratic decision was. Um, the question is how and how fast, but it's a question of how, not if. So what happens now, assuming that the government doesn't win its appeal, is that there's going to have to be, this is what's going to have to, have to happen before we get to, uh, to Brexit. That's going to give you, John Mayer, and business some sub sort of security, and, and you're going to know what's going to happen, rather than Brexit means Brexit, which well, means what? Yeah. In between times, we have two years of great uncertainty. And how can any business actually put more money into funding their business, really? No, they need to forward plan. If I forward my plan, my business, five years in advance. I don't forward plan it five minutes in advance. I need to know, you know, what's going to go on in this country. I need to know where the funding's going to come from. So there's, there's, a, there's a constituent and a business person, a driver for the economy, John Penrose. He's saying this is all a bit uncertain. Uh, he's, he's absolutely right, I'm afraid. I mean, the, the thing is, I, I can't... Um, tell everybody that everybody knows precisely how it's going to work because you know that this was a decision we collectively took. We all took it with our eyes open. Some of us voted remain, some of us voted leave. Mm -hmm. But having taken that decision, we now, as a country, have got to work through the details of how it happens. And, and we've got to do that as fast as we can. John's absolutely right to minimise that uncertainty. But 
nobody can look anybody straight in the eye and say there isn't anything we don't know yet. There's an awful lot of details to work through. He's absolutely right. 0345 905 949. We're exploring what next for Western Supermare. It's 905 949. What next for Western Supermare, a town that's seen significant changes, not least of which there's going to be an eight-screen, uh, eight multi-screen cinema in Dolphin Square. That's going to also give shops and offices as well. Uh, Western College will become the University of Western. We heard that from uh, the... Uh, principal of the college, Dr Paul Phillips, at the beginning of our programme this morning. That'll be next year. Winter Gardens keeps its ballroom, uh, but will become a law centre. Uh, more shops, perhaps, for Western Super Mayor. Um, certainly a lot of money being spent on the town, but there is a debate as to whether it will have a big-name retailer or not. But what about some of the, 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 the more fundamental community and society issues? Um, Let's go to Connie now. Connie, good morning. Hi, good morning. Uh, nice, nice, thank you very much for joining us here live at Western College. Um, one of the big words that everyone nods, and I, I always say this on my programme, goes, mm, yes, we must talk about that, community. And then we talk about diversity, and everyone nods and goes, yes, we must talk about that. And what is the key well, issue for diversity well, here? Diversity, you know, Western is... Um, uh, because BME Network, we started... Uh, BME Network has been going on for... 10 years and then we uh, we had a new office in Old Church Street and we created uh, CODA which is Center for Diversity and Culture. Mm. That's how it started because in our the, the charity that we do uh, we help all sorts of people and we found out that there is about 60 different nationality nationalities in Western Superman and we're becoming cosmopolitan. Mm. So you've got 60, 60 yes. different nationalities in yes. West Sumer. You yes, say you yes, we've cosmopolitan... heard about 60 different nationalities. So yeah. is, there, is there a fair representation of those nationalities? It's probably it is. You know, that's what we see in the book. You know, that's what happened. And maybe more. When, when, yes. when did you come to Western? I came to Western 22 years ago. Why? It, because those... Uh, I used to live at the Cotswolds, mm-hmm. and uh, my, uh, the ones who deal with my finances uh, told me that when I got divorced, uh, my house in the, at the Cotswold can buy three houses in Western. <laughs> <laughs> so economics, so basically. I came to Western, basically, for, you know, I, I mean to say... I got divorced and I need, you know, something to live on. So I bought three houses to support me and my lifestyle. I, I, I wonder whether that I wonder whether that eco- economic equation would still be the same Cotswolds to Western Supermare now. Well, that, that, that's a big drop, but at yeah. the same time, you know, Western Supermare is up and coming. Mm. It is becoming to be one of the. You see, this, 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 yeah. Connie raises a very interesting point there. Uh, yeah. I, I, I go back, I worked in Western for a year in 1986, yeah. um, flogging houses, funnily yeah. enough. And <laughs> I, I look at what houses were selling for, flats were selling for in Western Supermare, you know, 25, 30,000 pounds. Uh, not now. You're looking at sort of 300, 350. Put a, put a zero on yeah, that. Yeah, put a, That's a, a, right. a, 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 a zero. Absolute, yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So does that yeah. mean that, you know, the, the Connie of today, yes. that those who perhaps are arriving in the UK to set up home and set up business, could they afford to live in Western Supermare? Well, is it the, affordable for them? Well, the thing is, if you work hard enough, nothing is impossible. Because a lot of people like me who came over to Western, uh, to, to this country, mm. we, we educated ourselves, we worked hard enough. I am a trained nurse, I was trained at the Westminster Hospital mm. in those days. Right. And I got what I want. So did you work at Western General? Yes, I did work at the Western General. Yeah, yeah. Although I was a London trained, yeah, yeah I work at Western General, I'm now retired. Mm. Yes. Shame you're retired because they could do with nurses at Western General. <laughs> you don't need me to tell the, you that. The mind is willing. The mind is willing. But the body, but the perhaps. Body, <laughs> I, well, again, we're, we're coming up towards the end of our first hour this morning. Uh, yeah. What next for Western Supermare? What, what does Western need for you? I mean, we, we've talked about you, you've come to Western, you yes. could buy three houses for what you've got. Yes. Uh, you, you've worked in the NHS. Yes. It's got its hospital. Yes. Uh, that hospital has significantly turned around in the last couple of years as well, hasn't it? Yes, um, yeah. But what, what else does Western need, do you think? Well, what Western need is some decent shops. Ah, you know, right, so you say decent shops. shops. Yes. Big shops like what? Uh, House of Braces, um, what was this? The John one? Lewis? John Lewis, yes, another one. Okay. And there's the... 
Primark. 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 That's Primark. the one I was thinking. You yeah, see, Primark. Now we have we to... really must have Primark in Western Supermare because, it, you know, it's college, lots of young people, and they can only afford, afford you know... Affordable uh, fashion. Affordable fashion. I'm available so for Royce Sobers, by the way. Primark here. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, John Penrose, um, we've talked about a lot this morning. Um, Primark, H&M, Debenhams. This is key retailers. Um, so whether it's Cribs Causeway, uh, which opened in 1998 with John Lewis, taking it out of the town centre of Bristol, putting it at Cribs, you need a key retailer. It seems to boil down to that for Western Supermare. I don't think it boils down to that. I mean, that would certainly help, absolutely. But there's a whole load of other things because we can't force retailers to open. We no. can make it attractive for them and make it more likely. But even if we don't get all the retailers that we want, there are a whole range of other things that we need to do as well. We've talked about improved rail, rail networks, uh, road networks. We need to improve our rail networks. And also, you know, here we are sitting in the middle of Western, uh, Western College. You know, the skills, the local skills base is out of sight better than mm. it was even five years ago, certainly ten. That, that but then Western needs to shout about that more, yeah, does it not? I think we do, because it's been a quiet revolution. But what it means now is that if you are an employer looking to set up or, or create, you know, set up a new, new office, um, this is now a really attractive place to do it. So there's a whole range of other things we need to do. Mm. Sh shops help, and they're really visible, yes, absolutely. But there's yeah. all these other things that actually may make even more of a difference than that. But that's John Mayer, a, a former chairman of, of the Federation of Small Business. This is about getting money into Western. It not going to John Lewis at Cribs Causeway or an expanded Cribs Causeway. It's staying in West Supermare, whether it's uh, the small business that we had on earlier, whether it's uh, the small business being serviced by another small business or, it, or Western making stuff that it then sends up the M5 or down the M5. Yeah, we do. We definitely want to keep everything in Western. It, transport's not going to improve, is it, really? So if we can keep... keep... Well, jo jo John, John is bristling on that one. Yeah. So I, I, don't think he, I don't think he agrees with you there. No, well, yeah, that, that's, that's fine. John's right, it's got to improve more, though. It's it has improved yes, more, yeah. He's absolutely yeah. right. Okay. But, yeah. but okay. It, fundamentally, you know, we, we need that development. I mean, one, the, where we're here today in Western College, one of the most important things, education, getting people ready for, for, ready for work, getting ready so we can actually employ them. That is one of the fundamental things, isn't it, that, that Western needs. So it needs funding. So, and that's that's very very key area really, and that's one thing. Maybe, we've, maybe ultimately, with about a minute left, maybe ultimately, but Western needs to really market itself better because I come back to the one of the, the interesting facts that many people won't understand is that Western and Bath are virtually the same size and population. But, and, and John, you said earlier on, you know, if, if you think you know Western, think again because mm. it has changed so much in the last ten years, really, and it's going to carry on changing. So yeah, you're right. We, we need to shout about it a bit more because we've got increasingly a lot more to shout about now. Absolutely, Connie. Let's come back to you because yeah. you came here 22 years. ago. Yeah. What has been the best thing about living in Western Supermare for you? You came from the Cotswolds, you came down here, clearly, by on, be honest, not by choice, but you came, you yeah. arrived. What's yeah. been the best thing for you? Well, the best thing for me is I have all the things that I need. That um, I am happy with what is happening in Western Supermare. You know, the, the progress, you know. This is the future of Bristol and Sea. <laughs> I, 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 I think Connie should be employed as the advocate yeah. for Western Supermare. Right. I love Western. Stick you, stick you yeah. on a poster right. with a great, your beaming right. smile That's saying, right. come yeah. to Western, it's lovely. It, it is um, a lovely place to live. <laughs> People are very friendly, you know. It, you, do you live in Western? Uh, no, I did. I did. Back in, 90, back in the mid-80s, I lived uh, for a year. If you live in Western, it's completely different now. Uh, well, I would yeah. think many places have changed since the 1980s, <laughs> yeah. not least of which I had become, hair. It's becoming um, a cultural <laughs> place. Western is becoming a cultural place <laughs> and a place for academics. And hopefully the shops will come over as well. Well, we've and, got more, yeah. more to talk about in our next hour together. Connie Neal, thank you very much for coming uh, onto the programme this morning. Also, thank you. Uh, John uh, Mayer, former chairman of the Federation of Small Business for Western Super Mayor and the Conservative MP uh, for... Western Supermare, John Penrose. Many thanks to all of you for coming on this Thank morning. You for inviting In me. our pleasure. In our next hour, we will be playing Noteworthy and we're going to have live music and performance.